It's time for Florida State football. This is Inside Seminole Football. Brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. And by Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Taggart's wardrobe. Hello and welcome to Inside Seminole Football with Coach Willie Taggart, Tom Block, and Coach, congratulations, a 36-26 win, your first victory at Florida State. So you've checked that box. And I know when you, you, know, when you look back, uh, I'm sure there was an awful lot that was left out there, but maybe most impressive was your team responded when it needed to in the fourth quarter to get that win. And, and that was good to see out of our guys. Um, they, they didn't quit, you know, and uh, they found a way to make a play for their teammates, and, and, and they, they did it when we needed it the most. And, and that was good to see for a lot of reasons, showed our guys that you can do it. You know, we just got to gotta focus more and, and, and be more consistent in our, in our uh, execution of the plays. And... Um, and doing it at a high level, you know, I think as, as a team, we need to come out with a different mentality uh, and get back to being, having a dominant mentality, something uh, we haven't had in the first two ball games, and uh, we got to get to that. An area where there was marked improvement from game one was the red zone, where you were three for three, but with three touchdowns, so I know you're pleased about that. Oh, absolutely, and, and again, um, when you go back and look at the film, I got to see um, where they leave a lot of plays out there, and I thought... Um, guys corrected some things, especially once we got down there, there was more of a sense of urgency of um, doing their jobs and, and, and they got it done. Florida State gets a 36 to 26 win. We'll take a look at the highlights and we continue right after this here on Inside Seminole Football. Welcome back, Coach. At the top of the show, you mentioned changing that mentality, and you tried to do so right from the get-go in this game. Uh, you win the toss, and instead of deferring, you went ahead and took the football. Yeah, and I, I just felt like it was so important that our, our team starts fast and, um, and thought taking the ball and felt we had a good week of practice. We'll go out there and execute the way that we, we needed to, and, um, and we didn't actually do that, but um, that was the intention of going out and trying to score fast and, and get ahead and, and start fast. Florida State uh, falls behind early, but uh, then rallies late. We'll take a look at the highlights starting here in the first half, obviously, as FSU gets the ball first. Here is the kick, and the game is started. At the goal line, LeBourne will field at the one to the 10-yard line outside the numbers to the right. LeBourne tripped up and dropped as he reaches the 18-yard line. Needle. Side far left, high snap. Francois gets the pass away, caught by Nyquan Murray. Made a guy missed out the near sideline. Runs over a tackler. He's near the 30-yard line. Long count. Here's the snap. They run a stun up front. And Jean-Marie Francois throws a deep ball downfield. It is too tall to be caught at the Sanford 44-yard line. Make that kick. Here is the punt from Logan Tyler. A high punt and will be caught and attempted return. One guy misses to the 45-yard line. Tackle made at the 45. Sanford with great field position from the 45-yard line. Dropping to Phil Hodges. Throws the deep ball downfield. Receiver of the area caught. Touchdown, Sanford. First game, first play of the game. And Kevin McKnight. And trail 6-0. Here's the snap. Inside handoff, a run play by DeAndre Francois. Made one guy miss and digs his way to the 25. Two receivers to the left, including Murray in the slot. Dropping to Phil Francois. Throws the ball. Cuts. Incomplete. First down, 15 from the 20. Play action fake. Hodges passes. Caught ball at the 30. To the 35-yard line. Out to the 39-yard line. Swings a receiver in motion. Here's the snap from the 13-yard line. Hodges throws a bullet. Caught ball at the 8-yard line. Tackle made in space right at the 8, maybe between the 7 and the 8-yard line. Shotgun formation. Takes the snap. Hands the ball off and running to the left side. Not much running room. Second effort close. Close to the goal line. The carry by Roland Adams. And it is a touchdown. Sanford, one receiver. To the right, shotgun formation. The snap, they send it away, blitz. Francois' throw caught a little low. Is it a first down? Nice effort to dig that thing out. Now into the backfield. He was in the slot. Takes the inside handoff, running to his left. Got the corner at the 35 to the 40-yard line. 
On third down, we come up empty. The punt by Logan Tyler, away from the returner. Nice punt by Tyler. It's going to bounce us into the end zone. They're short by a yard, third down and one. Inside had double reverse. Coming back, the pitch back to the quarterback. Wants to throw downfield, throws it away. And the Seminoles stop the trickery. From the 37-yard line, Francois throws a sideline route. Caught ball by George Campbell. Spins off a tackler, dives across the 46. He's down to the 47-yard line. Got a gain of four. Second down, six. Play action, make the honor. Throws the ball. Caught by Campbell again. Breaks the tackle at the 40. Zigzags by another to the 30. Inside the 30 to the third 26-yard line. Boy, it's the George Campbell show. A few moving left toward the north end zone. Out of the shotgun, the snap, play action fake. The Andre Francois throws safe side. Caught ball 10, 3 2 1. Touchdown, FSU. Our first touchdown of 2018. Tamari and Terry in stride. Great throw by Francois. And the Noles scratch the scoreboard late in the first quarter. Third down, three minutes to go. Here's the snap. Hodges looking over the middle. Fires over the little downfield. Got a resume. Wide open. Cut of the 40 to the 35 to the 30. Outside the numbers to the 20 to the 15 yard line and knocked out of bounds. Sanford, it's third down and 10 from the 13. The quick snap. Dropping to Bill Hodges, the pass away, caught at the 13, tackle made immediately at the 13-yard line. 35-yard effort. Here's the spot, the snap, the kick is airborne, and it is good. And Sanford leads 16 to 7. Francois takes the snap, takes the handoff, drops back to throw, looks deep, throws it deep. It is a caught ball to the 50, to the 45, and out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Nyquan Murray, second down nine, moving left. Trailing 13 or 16 to 7. The pass to the right side. It is caught underneath a shallow crossing route by Trey McKinney. They'll spot the ball at the 31 on the final play of the first quarter. Final play of the first. Here's the snap. A little, little handoff to a running ball. It's Patrick inside the 50, 25 to the 20, down the sideline to the 10, tripped up inside the 10. Good snap inside. Play action fake by Francois. Francois to the five. Touchdown, FSU. Francois 10, danced in untouched. What is that run option thing? The quarterback can burn you. They were thinking it was Jock West Patrick all the way, and he sold the handoff and then ran to the promised land. Third down and a long one or short two. Pass to the right. It deflected pass. It's intercepted. Picked off by FSU. Down the left sideline, A.J. Westbrook to the 30, 35 outside the number, to the 40 near midfield, and A.J. Westbrook comes up with a defensive ending. Here, see if the Seminoles can capitalize from the 48-yard line. DeAndre Francois throws a crossing back. Caught ball inside the 35-yard line to the 33-yard line. Here's the punt by Logan Tyler. High end over end thing. Will come down and be caught at the 13-yard line. Second down. Here's the snap. Dumps the shoulder. Hodges throws toward the end zone. It is caught ball. Touchdown, Sanford Bulldog. And Kelvin McKnight is having a night to remember. End zone, fresh set it down to the snap. Dropping the throw. Here comes pressure. DeAndre Fields against the pass. Caught at the 35 to the 30. Inside the 25-yard line goes Chuck West Patrick. To spot it. Good snap. The kick is airborne. Long enough by a rookie. Did he make it? He is no good. Second one, he has missed. Wide to the left this season. Kelvin Hodge is ready to go. We'll hand the ball off, and the Seminole front four stop the run of Roland Adams. It belongs to FSU. Cyrus Fagan comes up with a fumble football. Throw and spend that time out if you have to. Here's the snap. Finds one of the throw. Toward the end zone. Caught ball in the end zone. Touchdown, FSU. Touchdown, Tamaria Terry. He's got two. Now Francois throws a dart. That is caught by Tamari and Terry, and the Seminoles trail by two with a minute 19 to go. 23-21, Sanford will head to the locker room with a two-point lead over the favored Florida State Seminoles. Coach, it took a little while, but you, you got the offense going. It just felt like guys started to relax a little bit once you got into the end zone and, and uh, started making some first downs and moving the football. They did, and then, again, we, we moved the ball uh, very well. Again, we, we stub our toe here and there, and, and, and usually it's in a critical situation. So, um, again, getting our guys to focus and playing more consistently is going to be so important. And, and doing the little things back to the fundamentals and technique, we got to be more fundamentally and technically sound and, and being able to run the football. And that's something we hadn't done really well, and we got to get back to doing that. Defensively, to be fair, that's a pretty good quarterback that Sanford had out there. Yeah, he, he was really good, and he was on. Um, he was on on, on Saturday. Um, he made some really good throws, you know, and I know, um, again, when I talk about fundamentals and technique, a lot of that broke down uh, defensively in the first mm -hmm. half, and um, I thought Coach Barnett did a good job in the second half uh, making the adjustments, and um, I thought Sanford had a good, a good um, 
a good scheme for our, our base package and our defense, and, and Coach changed it up, and um, it paid off for us. Florida State uh, down by a couple at the break, but things turn around in the second half, and we'll get to the second half highlights right after this. Stay with us here on Inside Seminole Football. We're gonna get 1% better every day, okay? Start the day, let's go. One, two, three, finish. One, two, three, finish. You look like a football player. I don't know if you can play, though. Huh? You good? You love this game, don't you? I love it too, baby. Inside foot up. Inside foot up. That's it. Good. Good job, baby. Get out, get off him, get off him. Get off him, get off him. Hey, stay up, stay up. Stay up, Pete. Stay up. That's it, baby. Keep working. Hey, stay up. Get off the block, okay? You're doing this here instead of getting off. Tear off of them, okay? Yes, sir. This way you got to get good at, man. Getting off block. Yes, get out, get out, get out. That's it. Good job. Ah, uh, hey, Donna, stay square. Stay square, okay? Hey, that was a good punch, but stay square. Don't take a side. I got you. All right, don't take a side. Okay, just make sure your hands in front of you. Yeah, and then get off the block, okay? You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you like here, by the time you I put your like foot this. in the I ground, yeah, he okay. inside of it, okay. okay? When he put his foot in the ground, you want to be right here inside. Right. Inside of him and then get off the block. Okay. Check where first. Inside. Protect where first. Inside, inside. so we're going to step, punch, and extend. Okay, make that shield wide. <laughs> Clear here. Clear. Ah, uh, do that again, Adonis. You know what you did? You stopped. I mean, you got to clear the hips. Can't be still. Tight, you still got to clear the hip. You know, thank you, do it. I get out of here, man. Bike pedal out of here and get, get out of their way. They run me over. Good. <laughs> Just keep your head up. And everything else is fine, okay? Oh, that play that broke down at the end. No, that no. me. We know that. Nobody ain't getting punished. Nobody ain't say that. Yeah, nobody ain't say that. Are you good? You good? I love your action. I love your movement. We just got to get you. If you beat him inside, just up here, shoulder the quarterback. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, you good? That's big time. Now what? I'm trying to get a W every day. I love it. I love it, big dog. My man. <laughs> you Jedi. I love you, boy. I love you too, baby. Hey, we're going to break it real loud, okay? Let's go one, two, three. Gotta get better, all right? One, two, three. Gotta get better. There we go, baby. Welcome back, Coach. You're down by uh, a couple at the break. What were your What was your message to the team at halftime? Uh, one, um, relax, and, and there's no need to panic. Um, we just gotta again lock in and go out and, and play and play play with with a mentality of dominating, you know. And we hadn't done that, and 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 to me that was a a, a big factor in what and how we perform is just our mentality and how I got to do a better job of, of getting our guys ready from that standpoint, but. Once you're out there and you're playing ball, you know, you go out there and um, you want the dominating mentality. And, and um, I told him we need to go out and dominate the second half. Florida State uh, able to rally in the fourth quarter. Let's take a look at the come from behind highlights. Devlin punches, 
An RPO look, shotgun formation, drops to throw, looks to his left, fires to his left, wide open receiver at the 30-yard line, gain out to the 31, the 32. Here's the snap, 31, and dropping, Hodges gets the pass away, caught ball at the 34-yard line, short of the first down mark. The Seminole 24, here's the snap. Inside handoff to Cam Akers, made one guy, missed out, reverses field, comes back, cuts it against the grain, he's to the 29 to the 30-yard line. He made something out of nothing. Across the field. Second down, four, Knowles and Tempo playing fast, handoff Akers, he makes a big block in across the 35 to near the 40-yard line. Got a huge block on the left edge formation. Here's the snap, good protection, passes over the middle, and it is a caught ball at the 50-yard line. Inside, fake the handoff, running the other way. Uh, Cam Akers to the 40. Akers maybe has the first down. And Coach Willie Taggart's going to say, let's go for it. We were 0 for 1 against Tech on Monday night. Shotgun. Inside handoff, Cam Akers comes back to the right. I don't know if he got it. Second down and 10. Hodges fakes the handoff, throws the ball upfield. It is a caught ball in midfield. First down, Sanford Bulldogs. Five yard line from the Florida State 45. Here's the snap. Good protection this time. Good protection. Now it breaks down. Wilson in the grill of the quarterback. He has to throw it away. Almost picked off at the 27, but he was out of bounds. A.J. Westbrook trying to get his second pick. Moving left toward the north end zone. Here's the snap. Drop to Antoine, throws to the right side, caught by Akers. Tried, he made one guy miss and runs over another to the 21-yard line. Third downs in this game. Here's the snap for Antoine. Whoop, throws a hard side. Caught ball first down to the 30, to the 35. It's out to the 39-yard line. It's D.J. Matthews. Behind the uh, running back and quarterback, dropping back to the pressure cover. Gets the pass, a caught ball by Akers. Or he is going to be tackled. Fumble the football at the 35-yard line. Is it recovered by Sanford? Yeah, it is. It's Golden Adams, empty backfield. Hodges drops. Looks to his right, under pressure, he's going to try, he's hit, throws the ball upfield, it is intercepted, picked off at the 12-yard line, Kyle Myers has the pick. Off third down and eight, good snap, pressure coming, just a pass to the far, near side, uh, one hopper, incomplete pass. Logan Tyler, it's a nice snap, the left-footed punter puts it high in the air, returnable perhaps, backpedaling, McKnight makes the catch, backpedaling at the 38, made one guy miss, it is dragged down from behind to the 45. 4.43 to go. Knowles trail two. They fake the end around, and who's got the ball? There's a pass. The lateral to the left side. Tackle made. Well short of the first down. Sanford's quarterback, Hodges, line drive thing is going to hit around the 30-yard line and carry him out of bounds the 42-yard line. That as you high snap. Francois rolling, steps up there, looks downfield, throws the pass for outside side of the field. It is a caught ball. All by the flag thrown. Another flag thrown. It'll be roughing the passer, I believe. Late third quarter, high snap, dropping Francois, throws a sideline round. Got a receiver, George Kale. He cannot make the catch at the 20-yard line. Here's the snap. Tyler's left-footed kick is going to wobbly. Fair catch called for and made by McKnight at the 11-yard line. The 11 of the 12-yard line, moving left. Here's the snap. Dropping to his own end zone to throw, and Hodges hit as he threw the ball. It's a caught ball at the 27-yard line. Out across the 31 goes Kelvin McKnight with two more receivers. The snap, Hodges looking, firing the pass. Caught ball in the middle, 45-40. To the Seminole 35, to the Seminole 32-yard line. Toward the north end zone. The snap to Hodges, looks over the middle, throws a fade route, near sideline. It will be intercepted in the end zone. Kyle Myers has two picks today. Bad throw by Hodges. Come on, O. Huge stop by the Seminole defense. Myers with his second. An interception for a touchback. Sidecar to the right, tight into that right. Here's a jet sweep hand, uh, flip to Matthews. Matthews to the 30, dragged down from behind to the 35-yard line. FSU, first down 10 from the 34. We'll run the ball to the right side. It's Cam Akers to the 40, to the 45, to the 47-yard line. Trail 23-21. High snap, empty backfield. DeAndre Hedgehog's going to run the ball, got a block. Gets outside to the 45, to the 40. Run out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Shotgun formation, third down long. Good snap. Francois looking right, looking right, looking right. Now he throws the ball and had to get rid of it. Aguayo to put the toe to it, gets the kick away. Plenty of leg, plenty of leg, plenty of leg. Oh my and goodness. it hit the upright, it's no good. Ready for the snap on first down. Takes the snap, hands the ball off, draw play, and trying to get outside. Broke a tackle of the 40, to the 35, 30, outside the numbers, right side, to the 20-yard line, tripped up inside the 20. Third down and 10, they need to reach the nine-yard line. Dropping Hodges, throws toward the end zone, looping, pass in, knocked away in the end zone. Well played by a Seminole defender earlier. It's Finneran. The spot, the kick airborne, it is long enough, and it is good. 43-yard line, dropping Francois. They said the kitchen play. Caught ball, first down to the 30-yard line. Hellman. Trey McKinney hangs onto the ball. On third down and six. Trailing by five. 
in fake the jet sweep now hand the ball juggle ball by acres gets the corner 20 15 10 yard line he's dropped here is the snap francois looking 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 throws toward the other caught ball touchdown fsu Knowles lead for the first time this season the catch by trey mckinney right in the bread basket in motion to Mari and terry against the formation francois dropping under pressure throws toward the edge of it is a caught ball two-point conversion and guess who made the grab daquan murray how about Nooney Murray? Two point try, good. Knowles lead three. Shotgun formation, second down, eight. Looking right, firing right. Ball picked off. Intercepted yeah. to the 40, to the 50, to the 40. Could be a pick six. To the 30, to the 20. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, FSU. Touchdown, Florida State. Knowles with a pick six. It's Levante Taylor. It's about time. You just, it was time for him to make that play. A short seven, here's the snap on fourth down. One more chance, Hodges flushed out of the pocket, rolling to his right, still rolling, looking downfield, gets rid of the ball, throws against the grain, it's incomplete. Seminole fans can celebrate a game that started an hour, 25 minutes late. Once again, your final score, Florida State 36, Sanford 26. Trey McKitty catches what turns out to be the game winner and coach uh, we've heard a lot of buzz about Trey and obviously had five catches 59 yards including that touchdown tell us a little bit more about Trey. Uh, Trey is a phenomenal athlete um, um, really smart football player and, and we felt coming in he'll be a big part of the offense and and um, he came up big for us in this in this ball game uh, made some really good catches on third down and and then that that uh, winning touchdown uh, catch that he made he, he ran a really nice route um, Trey and I talked about that play um, early in the day, and, and it, luckily we got down there and got an opportunity to run it. And he did a great job, and DeAndre did a great job of getting the ball to him. I, I know you haven't run the ball the way you want to, but I thought DeAndre played a pretty nice game as well. Oh, absolutely. I thought he was he was sharp. Um, I thought he was really dialed into the game plan and, and what we had to do. And um, he, he showed his toughness in there and uh, made some really big time throws for us, and that was really really good to see from that standpoint. So um, if we can get our running game going and he continue to play that the way that he played the other night, um, we can have something special. Florida State gets the win 36 to 26. Even the record at 101, now it's time to turn the page and get ready for another ACC contest. We'll talk about that right after this. Welcome into Inside the Headset. I'm Katherine Phillips alongside Coach Raymond Woody. You're one of three staff members who's been with Coach Tagger every season of his head coaching career. What is it about that guy that makes you want to be a part of what he's doing? Well, I tell you, he has a plan, you know, for uh, every single member, you know, on the coaching staff, obviously, and then down to the uh, student athletes. You know, he's a, uh, a great person to work for, caring for his players, and, um, He's, he's a really good ball coach. And you're well known as being one of the nation's top recruiters. You were named the second in the ACC with just two months to recruit here at Florida State. How were you able to consistently pull some of the nation's top talent? Well, honesty, you know, and, and then obviously, you know, being with Coach Taggart for this long, you know, he was known for one of the best recruiters in the country, you know, when he was an assistant coach and, you know, just over the years, you know, just being natural, being authentic, um, you know, not telling the kids something that's not true because these days in time, you know, they can look on uh, Twitter, I mean, Facebook, internet, you know, so basically just being, you know, honest. So when you all got to Florida State, obviously quite a few of you have been on staff together before, a couple new guys. When you sat down together for the first time, what was discussed as being the core values and what you wanted to accomplish here at Florida State? Well, you know, obviously, um, you know, you go out and recruit kids, um, you know, you, you want a good character guy. You know, you want to win, and then you have to have talent, but you know, we want to win a national title. You know, and in order to do that, you know, it's all about working and loving each other. 
You know, once you start doing that, you know, we're here for a reason. All of us know football, you know, but we want the student athletes, you know, to love each other. And before they can do that, we have to model that behavior. Describe yourself as a coach. A teacher, you know, I was obviously an educator, you know, before, um, you know, I started in my, in my coaching, you know, I was a teacher first, you know, had an opportunity to um, go to college, play ball, had a taste of the uh, professional rank, then went back and um, started coaching, you know, high school ball and, you know, the guys always would say, you know, coach, you don't, you don't use profanity, you teach us you know, what we have to do. And that's what these kids want, you know, even at the um, peewee to professional, you know. I feel like I'm a good teacher, hands-on, you know. I feel like I um, touch all the different learning styles, whether it's uh, tactile, whether it's visual, whether it's auditory, whether it's constetic, you know. Being able to touch the environment, which in the linebacker room, we have all different type of learning styles. As a coach, you got to be able to fit those learning styles in order for them to go out and execute. So in all your years of coaching, and at so many different levels, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned? Um, details. You know, you, I mean, you have to be, <laughs> you have to be detailed in your work. Because again, you know, if you're not detailed, I mean, you can, um, <laughs> lose a game in a second. You know, being able to teach the small details. You know, not the big picture, but part, part, whole. You know, detail. And I know, obviously, coaching doesn't leave you very much free time, especially with all the recruiting that you're doing, but outside of coaching, take the coach's hat off, the teaching hat off, what would you be doing if you ever have free time? I would say read. You know, read a book. You know, just always trying to to get an edge, always trying to, you know, get more knowledge and, and, you know, I mean, I've actually grew up being involved with sports all my life, but, you know, just to take away the sport, the sporting component, you know, I would read a book, you know. What's the last book you've read? Uh, you Are The Team, you know, I had to read You Are The Team and it, it kind of, Coach T had us reading that book and it was a great book. And just teaching the, the principles on how to improve your team inside and out. And then some of the things that we talked about, you know, being selfless, uh, you know, having love for each other, you know, being humble, you know, those type of things. And that really helped not just me, but it overall helped the team of coaches, you know, to be able to read that book. And it was awesome. All right. Well, that's Coach Woody. Coach, good luck this season. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kendall Herman, and I'm a student assistant for the Sports Nutrition Department here at Florida State University. Thanks to my Bright Future scholarship, I'm able to dedicate all of my free time to the athletics department completely on a volunteer basis. This opportunity has allowed me to work alongside of our director of sports nutrition, where I'm not only having fun on the sidelines, but I'm also learning a lot of valuable skills for my future career as a sports dietitian. I could not be more proud to do the work that I do, and I want to thank the Florida Lottery for funding my Bright Future. A lot of anticipation and excitement has surrounded the FSU football team since the start of the Taggart era in Tallahassee. And with the beginning portion of practices being open to all media members, it was no secret that this Florida State team plans to move at a new speed, fast. There's a lot more tempo, everything's more uh, open and just, there's a lot more energy here in Tallahassee this fall camp, so it's really exciting. With the change in tempo and speed, there has also been a change in the atmosphere during meetings and practices. You want to be here, you want to spend time with your teammates and with your coaches. And you want to work on your craft, you know, and then you want to be the best player you can be for the sake of the team. Just to come to work every day to get better every day, y'all get 1% better every day and be, be single-minded and be selfless and, and show the guys that what it takes to win the championship. After a few short weeks in Tallahassee, Florida State football headed south, holding practices at IMG Academy in Bradenton. IMG was a great time for us. It allowed us to get out of our comfort zone here in Tallahassee and just 
us being in an uh, isolated location just allowed the team to really come together, so it's good. Um, so it was it was very enjoyable uh, getting down there and just uh, continuing to work. And, you know, it was a it was a business trip, and you know it was it was fun to to go down and you know spend all that time, but you know still have practice, still have meetings, still work, and, and be focused on you know the ultimate goal of going down there. With a new staff, new scheme, and new faces, there are a lot of questions surrounding the program this season. But something that has remained constant amidst the changes are the personalities of the players. All right, now I got a question. What's up? When, you, when we were playing against the first team defense, mm -hmm. who are you worried about the most? Uh, nobody. Nobody. Hey. At all. Hey, that's not crazy. Not worried about anybody. That's crazy. <laughs> hey, you see, hey, get me burned. You see his face. Really? Not worried about anybody. <laughs> really? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay. And how do you feel about this new scheme? I feel great about it. I mean, what, what better is I can pin my ears back and go get the quarterback. What, what that's what I do. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. No, but let me flip it on you. How do you feel about your new coach, Coach Woody? I love Coach Woody, man. He's very interactive with me. You feel me? He calls me, checks up on me. Make sure I'm all right on and off the field. So I feel like Coach Woody was a great addition to the staff and he was a great addition for me. This staff can relate more to us. They can relate to us. They're more energetic. Hey, hop up, let's go! Hop and up, they just allow go. us to be up. Despite the light atmosphere, Florida State knows they have a lot of work to do this season. Today's X's and O's segment is presented by Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Shop ChooseNissan.com, innovation that excites. Third down goal, we trail five. Here is the snap, Francois looking, 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 throws toward the other, caught ball, touchdown FSU, nose lead for the first time this season. The catch by Trey McKinney, right in the breadbasket. Today's X's and O's segment, we're gonna talk about Trey McKitty's touchdown catch here. If you see this formation, a two by two look, you got two eligible receivers here and two eligible receivers with the tight ends here. It's a formation that we've been running the entire game and uh, we, we knew if we got down here, they'd get you two, two high safety. You got a safety here and one over here. Trey knows if he can get inside of that safety by making a, a nice move on him, uh, he know he'll be wide open in the back of the end zone. If you can recall during the game, Trey had been running the stick route, been catching some nice stick route, and now he's trying to get the linebacker to think we're running the stick route. Cross the safety face, and DeAndre does a great job of uh, with ball location and uh, great execution of play here. It's really important that he understand where the safety is, and he's got to get across his face. Great job, great execution, touchdown nose. And that's today's exit and nose segment. The Look Ahead is presented by Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Register to win a football fantasy experience at KnowlesContest.com. Welcome back, Coach. Back to the ACC and, and back, or I should say, on the road for the first time. So let's let's start there. What changes when you go on the road and away from Doe Campbell Stadium? Well, um, we try to do everything the, the same, you know, um, the same as we do on Fridays when we in town. We try to do the same thing when we're on the road. I think other than the fact that we won't be in our home stadium, we'll be in someone else's. Um, not much, not much change. You, you, you know the opponent that you're going against. It's a tough environment up there. And, and um, our, I tell you one thing that have to change is our mentality going into the ball game and making yeah. sure that we go in and with the right mentality. This is a program that, uh, like you, they, they go fast. And mm -hmm. they've had the install for a couple years longer. Mm -hmm. They go even faster maybe mm -hmm. than what you want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, did, what, what problems does that present? Or is it beneficial that your defense is seeing your offense on a regular basis? Well, I, think, I think it helps our defense um, in understanding how, how they want to call plays and, and how um, they go about dealing with the tempo part of it. You know, I know Coach Barnett have certain things he likes to do uh, when it's tempo. So, um, that, that helps tremendously, and, but at the end of the day, a guy's got to go out and execute, and, and um, they're a really good football team. It's, it's challenging when, when you're going fast and, and you have a um, very challenging scheme. So um, our guys got to be disciplined, they got to be patient, and they got to do a great job of tackling this space. FSU on the road at Syracuse this weekend. Kickoff at 12 noon up in the Carrier Dome. We'll come back with some final thoughts right after this.
Welcome into Garnet and Gold Grub, presented by Tico People's Gas. I'm Katherine Phillips, alongside award-winning chef Travis Johnson. He's the executive culinary director of Seminole Dining here on the campus of Florida State, and he's going to walk us through a delicious game day recipe. Chef, what you got? Well, game day recipe desserts. <laughs> so we're going to do a uh, traditional southern uh, cobbler. Okay. And we're going to make that in a cast iron. Okay. And do it all in one pot. That's one of my favorite desserts, so I'm ready. <laughs> Um, so we're going to start out by uh, looking at our, our biscuit dough, and we're going to incorporate all of our uh, dry ingredients together. So add our flour, sugar, because we want it to be sweet, a bit of cinnamon, a pinch of salt, our baking powder, and then we're going to go ahead and just whisk all these together. We want to make sure that we incorporate them really, really well. And then we're going to take our wet ingredients, which is our milk, and our egg. And we are going to mix these together. We always want to do them separate. And then we will incorporate them together as we go. So would you like to stir? I'll have you stir. And we'll add in. Keep going. We'll just kind of whip this up. You see how it's starting to get thick? Yeah. I'm going to add our butter. And this is just soft butter, so it was uh, set out at room temperature. Kind of reminds me of being in Grandma's kitchen. That's a workout. It is. All right, now that we've got this mixed up, you're going to want this biscuit dough to sit for probably 25, 30 minutes. So we're just going to go ahead and put it in the fridge, and then we'll come back to it when we're ready. OK. okay. Next, we need to make the crumble that's going to go on top. It's going to make it taste really good. I'm going to add our butter, our brown sugar, our flour, and we'll mix that together. And you want it to be clumpy, and you'll see why when we get to the end. So this is where we're going to get our stove on. Today, we're using medium cast iron. And right now, I have a medium to high heat. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and add my blueberries. So those are going into the skillet. And you're also using natural gas, so what's the benefit of that? The benefit of natural gas, especially for making cobblers like this, is I can really control the heat. So I've got it turned up pretty high right now because I want to start to cook these blueberries. And we're going to add some cornstarch here in a moment and some citrus. And we need that temperature to be up at 140 degrees so that cornstarch starts to work. And you end up with that nice, uh, thick, more of that cobbler uh, base yeah. that you like. And so with the gas, I can control the temperature. Like right now, I'm going to turn it up to get it nice and hot. You can start to see the berries cook. We're going to take our cornstarch. The cornstarch is going to work with the berries and the water. And again, once that temperature hits 140 degrees, it's going to start thickening up. And you're going to end up with your cobbler base. We're going to go ahead and take some Florida oranges and some Meyer lemons and just add just a little bit more essence of citrus to this give it some flavor. This is just wonderful. So now we're going to let this cook for about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. We want the berries to, to almost break down. Because remember, we're going to take this cobbler when we finish and finish it in the oven. Okay. So we want to cook the berries about half to three fourths of the way. Okay. Okay. All right. You can see there's a nice simmer here. You never want to bring this back to a boil, but you want to have just a nice simmer to the berries and always want to taste as you're cooking. And what I'm tasting for right now is sweetness. Okay. So depending on the season, uh, the berries could be really sweet, or we may have to add more sugar, depending on how it is. Okay. Those are spot on. I'm gonna pull it off the stove. And we have our biscuit dough that we had in the refrigerator. Yep. About 25, 30 minutes again, it's gonna set up. It makes really good. We're just gonna take this and do drops. And you put this biscuit dough in raw because we're going to drop this into the oven and we're going to bake it on 350 degrees for about another 18 to 20 minutes. Okay. And now revisit. We have our crumbles. This was our flour and our brown sugar and our butter. We'll just get right in there. Top this off. How's it look? It looks so good. So you leave that clumpy like that? I leave it clumpy okay. like that. Yep. Now let's go ahead and get this in the oven. All right, it's been about 18 to 20 minutes, but I can really start smelling it in the oven. Let's check on this. Wow, that cobbler looks great. It reminds me of my great grandmother's. That's exactly what it looks like. Should we try it? Yeah. Oh, 
I think the only thing that would make that better is some vanilla ice cream. I was about to yeah. say. <laughs> For full details on this recipe or more information on how you can incorporate natural gas at home, at your business, or at your next tailgate event, log on to peoplesgas.com slash cooking. Coach, it's a work week, but it's a full work week, and I think sometimes we lose in translation the fact that when you play Monday, then Saturday, it is tough to get uh, you know everything ironed out, so at least you get a regular amount of prep time this week. Oh, absolutely, and our guys get some time to rest, rest their bodies, and, um, and for coaches, like you say, having more time to, to um, study the film that you're, of your opponent, so um, looking really for, looking forward to that this week. Um, looking forward to, again, getting back to the discipline and, and technique and fundamentals of the game and that all starts with discipline and our guys got to be locked into what we're doing, the individual assignments and, and then go out and play with uh, tremendous passion. You talked a couple of times about uh, changing that mentality a little bit more. Does that mean being more physical at practice this early in the season or is that just a mindset? It's more of a mindset. We're physical at practice. You know, yeah. it's just a mindset when you, you step on that field on, on Saturdays. Um, you gotta have a certain mindset. If if, if you're gonna if we're gonna be the football team that we intend to be, uh, we gotta have that. And it all starts with discipline and and then fundamentals and technique. And um, we as coaches got to do a better job of, of um, teaching our guys that, and our, our players got to do a better job of executing it. Sounds good. All right, we will uh, be back next week. Florida State and Syracuse. We'll have a look back next week right here on Inside Seminole Football. Inside Seminole Football has been brought to you by. The Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. And by Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Taggart's wardrobe.